Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and start by introducing ourselves. My name's Shannon and my husband's name is Seth and we have been married for four years now. We've been together for 10 years total, including marriage. Um, so we've had quite the journey. Um, I'm 27 and he is 26 years old and we have been trying to conceive for about three years now. Um, we started seeing fertility specialists after um, trying to conceive for about a year and a half. When we got to the two year marker, we were referred to a specialist and that's when all the testing began. We have been diagnosed with unexplained infertility. Uh, everything we've been tested with has came back completely normal. Um, we are not really given any reasons why we are not been able to get pregnant. So I just wanted to start documenting our journey and really just hone in on the power of prayer and seeing God's provision through it all. Um, we know that he has his hand in this and that he is faithful through everything that we face in our lives. And he is all we need to fall back on. And we're just trusting in him and his timing. So stay tuned to get more details about our fertility journey. And we're just really excited to start sharing with you guys so we can be an example and show hope for others just like We hope that we can be hope and share joy to others who are facing the same struggles just like us. Um, we really, really, um, we're excited to share our story and we're excited to show you how God is playing out his provision for us. And um, again, we're, we're sharing this because we want to have the ability to encourage and speak with others about their journeys that are facing the same things. So stay tuned. Okay. Guys. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and make a video from the start of our journey to the point of where we are now. Um, I look like a hot mess because we just had our second IUI this morning and we didn't get the best of news. So I'm just in bed today. Um, I took the day at work. Um, I just needed to rest and really get my thoughts together. And this is when I felt like it would be best to really just hone in on what our journey has looked like and share with you guys in this video. So I have um, been going through the fertility process for uh, well, we have been trying to get pregnant for about three years. We started the fertility process about a year ago. So we tried for like a year and a half. We went to my regular um, OBGYN and they wanted to run some tests before they referred us to a specialist. So they tested my husband and his first test came back abnormal and they said that that could be common you know sometimes with men it fluctuates with their counts and how things look and blah 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 so they wanted to test him again they tested him again and it came back great it it looked awesome so we were really excited about um god really showing us that he had a hand in things there because obviously he did a miracle boosting his count um and so then they wanted to do some testing on me and the first test that they do when you go into infertility um, treatment or just trying to get your infertility explained is um an hsg testing and so what that test is is it's where they shoot um, die up into your fallopian tubes and they watch it on an x-ray screen and they see the dye flow into your tubes and they can watch your tubes fill with the dye and if you don't have um, your tubes filling with the dye then that usually means there's some kind of blockage and um, 
things aren't going right. And so maybe when you're trying to get pregnant, like the sperm's not flowing like it's supposed to be. So I went in for my first HSG and it was an extremely stressful situation. Um, our, our insurance was not um, working out right. There, there was like some kind of like glitch in the system. So I was super stressed. I was like, great, we're gonna have to pay thousands of dollars to have this procedure now um, because our insurance isn't going through. I was just crazy stressed. Went into this room, it was a sterile, cold room. Um, the doctors were okay. Uh, I just did not feel at ease. I did not feel rested. I did not feel uh, comfortable at all. And um, and they're talking over you as they're putting the x-ray over your uterus. And they're like, okay, like, all right, we see one filling with two. Oh, there's the other tube's not filling. And I'm stressing out. I'm crying on the table because I'm hearing that I only have one tube that's open. And... It, it was a horrible situation. So, they then referred me to a fertility specialist. I met with her. She was absolutely amazing. She talked me through the process, and she was like, listen, I know you're not going to want to have this procedure done again, but I want to do the HSG with you again. Like, I just want to, I want to see. Because sometimes, if it's a high-stress situation, it's not going to give you accurate results. And she was like, were you super stressed in that moment? Did you feel as though like you weren't comfortable? Like, were you having a hard time? And uh, I said, it was awful. I said, I, I never want to do that again. And I was really reluctant to like let her do it again. And she's like, no, you're going to do this in my office. Like, we're going to give you some medicine to relax you. It's going to be a whole different experience. So I went and had the procedure done again um, in her office and it was so much different. The doctors were just kind and gentle and just welcoming and inviting and talked to through things and you know just had casual conversations made you feel comfortable. I was also on medicine to relax me and both my tubes filled with the dye perfectly. There was no blockage. So. Again, I knew God had his hand in that. I was like, great, like, everything's turning out perfect. Like, my husband, his kale was bad, and then it was good. I had a tube blocked, and now it's unblocked. And um, So, the specialist wanted to run some more blood work testing on me. Um, so, they can test your the fertility of your eggs uh, through your blood, which I think is crazy. So, we did blood work to see if... Um, my eggs were good fertile eggs um, and that they were, you know, able to for be fertilized. And uh, it came back that they were in amazing shape. Um, she also wanted to do an ultrasound on me to, to count um, if I had egg sacs in my ovaries that hold the eggs. And they said they like to see uh, between eight and 10 egg sacs and I had like 13. So exceeding expectations there. That was super awesome and great. Uh, they checked my thyroid, but we found out that I had some thyroid imbalances. They diagnosed me with subclinical hypothyroidism. And what that means is I don't really need to be on thyroid thyroid medicine if I'm not trying to have children, but I need to be on it if I am because um, the chance of miscarriage can be extremely high with these levels off. So they put me on um, some thyroid medicine to lower those levels, and then we checked my prolactin levels. Those were a little off. Um, they wanted to give me an MRI to make sure it wasn't like a, a tumor on my pituitary gland in my brain. Of course, that had me stressed and I'm like, oh, what? You know, like those words were so scary to me. But again, I was trusting in the Lord and um, brain came back completely normal, very healthy. So they put me on medicine to lower those levels and those levels have been on track. So once my thyroid levels and my prolactin levels got in check, they allowed us to do treatment. Um, they started us with a low dose of Clomid, which is an egg, I mean, a, a pill that allows you to release more than one egg and it helps you ovulate. Um, 
we didn't really have any success with that. Uh, some months I would hit peak on my ovulation predictor kits and uh, some months I wouldn't. I wouldn't hit anything at all. Um, and so we did that from about October of 2019 to December of 2019. And um, after December, I hit rock bottom. I was done. I told my husband I was done. I didn't want to take the medicine anymore. I was tired of having to put myself through this pain constantly. Um, so I said I wanted to take a little bit of a break. And so I took a break. Uh, we took a break for a little while. Um, but back around Christmas, there was like crazy amount of people announcing on social media that they were pregnant and I hit rock bottom I was in a really bad place I was crazy bitter I was angry I was mad I didn't understand um, why this was happening to us um, especially since we're being told that everything is completely normal and we're healthy and we are not being diagnosed with anything in particular to explain any of this. And so I, I was having a hard time and I really had to do some soul searching and I really just had to find God in the process. I had to just pray countlessly. And so I, I prayed and I gave it to God. I told God, I said, look, like, it's in, it's in your plans, it's in your will, and you are going to make this happen for us, and I'm giving it to you, and I'm letting this bitterness go, and I let the bitterness go, and uh, I'm a teacher, I teach kindergarten, and so I was at school one day during my planning period, and um, one of our custodians, he is the most precious man on this earth, like a godly, godly man, very encouraging, will pray for you whenever you need it, um, and God sent him my way, uh, I, I, he just randomly came into my room during my planning period, and he, he said, listen, like, I've been putting off something that God has been telling me to speak to you for a few weeks now, and, uh, I just went home for my lunch break, and, was listening to a pastor on the radio and I just felt this overwhelming feeling of God just pushing me. You need to go talk to her. You need to go talk to her. I was like, okay. And uh, he was like, can I ask you something first though? Because I want to make sure I'm hearing God correctly. And I was like, yeah, of course. And he's like, Are you, do you and your husband want a baby? And I just, I lost it. I lost it immediately. I started sobbing and I was like yes and how else would my custodian at school know that my husband and I were trying for a kid if it wasn't for God I was like yes like we've been trying for a long time now and he was like okay well I am hearing God correctly and I want to pray over you right now he prayed over me and then he told me at the end of his prayer he said I just want you to know that God told me to tell you that he's going to give you a baby and he's going to allow you to become pregnant and it's coming and just wait on his timing. He, he is here. And, uh, that was back in like February, January of 2020. And, uh, I lost it because I knew, I knew God, um, he had a purpose for us. He, he had everything laid out, uh, and and I just thought it was crazy that after my bitterness, after my bitterness was gone, God showed himself to me through my custodian. How amazing is that? Um, so, after that, we waited a few more months and uh, then COVID-19 hit and uh, school was shut down for on March 13th. I didn't go back to work and I called them and they said that they were not doing any current like any new treatments uh, until they could get people back into the office so I was like okay that's fine so uh, I think they called I can't remember if they called me or I called them 
in May uh, to see if they were doing treatments again, and they said yes, and since it had been a few months, uh, they wanted, they just went ahead and let me um, go get on the clomid because every month that I had taken the clomid, I had, as soon as I started my period, I had to go in and get an ultrasound to make sure no cyst had developed from the medicine and everything was good to put me on the cycle again. And they said since I had been off of it for a few months, they were just going to let me get back onto it. So I got back onto the medicine and in, in June, I got back on it in June uh, through my next cycle. And uh, I took it on cycle days five through nine and we were gonna do the IUI. We decided we were gonna go in for our IUI. We were gonna have the procedure done and it was really gonna be, it was gonna be a good thing. We're gonna, we're gonna have it work. And uh, in the middle of me taking my doses of the Clomid, my husband got called up from the military. He's in the army. Um, to drive to to report to Richmond and um, help fight against the the riots going on in Richmond, which was a really scary time for me because um, <laughs> you you just don't know what you can expect when there's a dangerous situation going on and your loved one goes out and fights and I I was angry at that situation because I'm like one like this is messing up our timing and selfishly I was not happy about it um and you know here's my innocent husband doing no harm to anyone and he gets taken away from his family and his home to go fight against something that he had nothing to do with uh, but I, I know that's the part of being in the military and sacrificing, you know, your time and your life for for your country and and the people that you live around. And so I'm thankful that he is willing to do that. But it was really frustrating because he was taken away during uh, our fertile time when we were supposed to go do IUI. Um, I actually did an ovulation predictor kit. I hit a peak immediately, which was awesome, but he was gone. So we obviously couldn't do IUI without him. I was able to drive up to Richmond and stay with him the weekend that I had hit peak and then I was most fertile. And uh, he had to stay in Richmond for like two weeks and he had his own hotel room. So. We were, ho we were hopeful, we were hopeful that, you know, maybe, maybe this worked on our own, and, you know, we went with my fertile tackle, and, uh, it didn't work. So, I got my period, I had to go in for my ultrasound to make sure everything was okay. They put me on the Clomid again, and in July, we were gonna go, we are gonna try my UI again, it was gonna be great, you know, and, uh, I never hit peak. <laughs> so I took my ovulation predictor kits and I never hit a peak. And the doctors, they say sometimes those kits can be kind of funky and maybe you just didn't, um, I didn't pick it up at the right time or we didn't ovulate. We didn't know the cause. So of course I got my period again. Um, and so I went in for my ultrasound to make sure everything was okay and my doctor she was like all right let's change things up you've been on climate for a while and um if you really want to do IUI and make it successful let's change things up so they put me on letrozole which is the same kind of medicine as IUI but um it's not it's it's kind of like it, honestly I prefer it better because there's not as many side effects um so I was put on a dose of letrozole and then I was given a HCG trigger shot. So I had to give myself a shot. So, and I told my doctor, I said, I don't want to do the predictor kits anymore. It was too stressful. I hated having to wake up and, and take those tests immediately in the morning. And they're clearly not giving me accurate information. So she's like, all right, we're going to bring you in for a mid cycle ultrasound and then we'll go from there. So I, I did the letrozole. I went in on cycle day 12 for my mid-cycle ultrasound, and I had one 
good egg. It was at 20 millimeters. It was ready to drop. And I had another one on my left side. These were both on my left side. Uh, one at 14 and it wasn't big enough or ready to drop. So my doctor said, give you, give yourself the HCG shot tonight in your stomach. Um, and then go, I think that was on a Friday. You'll come in Sunday morning for your IUI procedure. So I was like, okay. So we did the shot. Um, we waited a day. We went in on that Sunday morning to do the IUI procedure. My husband's account was amazing. He was at 14 million. They loved the numbers that they saw. We did the procedure. And they were like, it's a two week wait. So we'll wait for two weeks. And uh, they said, don't take a pregnancy test until 14 days after this procedure because with the HCG in your system, you'll get a positive test and that's not what we want like we want to make sure that's out of your system and if you get a positive test it's because of an actual pregnancy not because of the shot and not even a week later after the procedure I got my period um, so I had started my period early it was absolutely devastating I, cause I was so hopeful because of the past two times that we had tried to do the IUI and it was it was so complicated and it just didn't work out and this time I just felt like everything went so smoothly and like everything was working out for our good and it didn't work. So I went in for my ultrasound to make sure everything was okay. My doctor upped my dose of letrozole. I ordered another trigger shot and um, I went in on Friday. This is in August now. Um, I went in on Friday. Saturday. I went in on a Saturday uh, to, I can't remember what day it is. I wish I could remember the day. It's in August. Um, we went in on a Saturday morning for my mid-cycle ultrasound. And on my right side, I had two eggs ready to drop. One at 23 millimeters, one at 20 millimeters. That was awesome. Great sizes. And on my left side, I had one, another one that was at 17 millimeters. So they were all pretty good sizes. I had three eggs, three eggs, uh, ready to drop. So my doctor said, give yourself your HCG shot tonight around 9 p.m. And then we'll bring you in Monday morning for your second IUI. Well, not even 15 minutes before we were supposed to give myself the shot, I started spotting. And we thought that was really interesting because I was ovulating. I shouldn't have been bleeding at all. And uh, I called my doctor. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And he said it could have been from the probe of the ultrasound. And it could have irritated it. And um, everything should be okay. And we should stick with the process. I had had some cramping. He said that probably means your ovulation's working. He's like, you gave yourself the shot. Let's just go through with the plan. So we went in this morning um, to set, have our second IUI, and that is where we are now. Um, later on in this video, I will give you more updates about the second IUI, so continue watching. And I know this was long-winded, but we're excited to make more videos about our journey and see where we go from here. Thank you, guys. This journey has been long, it has been hard, it, we've had many ups and downs, but one thing that has been consistent through it all is God's provision and His love for us, and we know that He has a plan for us, and we know that His hand is in this, and we are just excited to see His faithfulness unfold, because it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful story as this We had just picked up our first IUI sample. And we were carrying it to the procedure room, getting ready to potentially make a baby. This was right before our first IUI. We were super excited and ready to get This it. was right after I had just found out that my first IUI was not successful. Um, I started my period a week early. Doctors don't really know why. But it was probably one of the hardest days because I was so hopeful because... When we actually got to do IUI, it was so easy and so smooth, and I really felt like things were working out for our good. Um, I'm just so thankful for my dog in this moment because 
she knew something was wrong. She knew I was upset and she just wanted to lay with me and comfort me. My husband was still at work and so he wasn't able to be home when we got the initial news. But as soon as he got home, we just spent the evening crying together, praying together and just giving it all to God and just really trying to navigate our journey and know that our faith and hope rest in the Lord. On our way for IUI round two. So, excited to see how this goes. I have three eggs, or did have three eggs that were ready to drop. 23, 20, and 17. So they were Pretty good, pretty ready to go. It's a good size. Do you have any comments? I'm at peak performance this morning, ready to go. Maybe this is going in our document video to save forever. Okay. <laughs> I'm at peak performance this morning, ready to go. Uh, excited to see what happens. And uh, hopefully we get a baby. We shall see. All right. Well, we know God's got this. We're excited to see. We've got about another hour before we get there so here we go so we've dropped off Seth's sample we're eating breakfast waiting to go in what you eating Seth burrito you got breakfast burrito from Chick-fil-A I got bacon egg and cheese and we also have Starbucks so we're just waiting to go in to get the call to say that everything's ready to go. Are you getting excited? Yep. Just for that, but. <laughs> All right. Keep updating. About to have our second IUI procedure. We were really excited and hopeful. We had just been given some pretty rough news. Um, our count was not as high as our first IUI. And um, we were told that you know the chances were not as great but it only takes one and we had two more eggs than we did the last time so we're just remaining super hopeful that it works and that god's provision is is for us and working towards us and we are ready to see how his hand plays out in this. okay so we're on our way home we had the procedure but we did not get the best news while we were there um our collection count was pretty low, a lot lower than the first round of IUI, but we know that God has got this, and um, there were some that they were able to inseminate and use, and we know that we just need one, and I have two more eggs than I did last time, so those, those odds are a little bit higher, and uh, we know that God can do anything, and He can work miracles, and He can he can make anything happen. It doesn't even matter what the odds are. He can make it happen. And um, we're just trusting in him. And it only takes one. Do you have anything you want to add? No, it, uh, <clears throat> definitely not the greatest news, for sure. Uh, but, like she said, it, it only takes one. And we have three times the opportunity this time than uh, what we had last time. So, uh, just pray it works. Um, we know that, you know, it's all in God's time and then it's all in His plan. And, uh, whatever the outcome is, it'll be okay. And we'll try again. If it doesn't work, we'll try again. I mean, that's all we can do. But we're just trusting in the Lord and we're just trusting that He's got his hand in this and that he's stronger than anything and he can make anything a reality and make anything happen so we just know that that's all we need is is him that's all we need so uh, excited to see how this two-week wait plays out all right well we will be back soon this is the result of having to do two hcg shots um one for each iui cycle that we've done so far and if it takes a hundred of these shots, we are willing to do it because we know that God has a plan and whatever it takes to get us our sweet little bundle of joy, 
we are willing to do. We know that God is with us. He is for us. And all of our faith and hope and trust is in Him. And we know that He has a plan for our lives. And I truly believe He is working in me right now. I have full trust and faith in Him. And I cannot wait to see how this all plays out. We were not given good odds, but we know that God can be all odds. And He is the ultimate, ultimate stronghold in our faith, in our lives, in our walk, and anything that we face.